Dear people who like to lie on the internet, real life, or whatever. If you're going to work on a big project with millions of dollars, if you don't think they aren't going to check every social media and everything you've ever said that you're going to do, you're dumb. CryptoZoo.co. I am so excited about this project. It's, it's, it's so fun. It's a really fun game that makes you money. A fun game that earns you money. How much did you guys make from CryptoZoo? I lost around fifty thousand dollars in crypto. I lost forty thousand dollars. I lost around fifteen thousand US dollars. I lost twenty five thousand dollars. One hundred twenty thousand dollars. Five hundred thousand dollars Australian, which is half a million. Can I have at least that much money to lose? What the hell? In crypto zoo. Shut up! No, you haven't. Yeah, five hundred k. Oh no. Today, we're investigating Logan Paul's CryptoZoo, a blockchain game that made millions but never worked. Some of you guys think you know the story, but it goes so much deeper. I've uncovered sociopaths, billionaires, fake orphans. Did I mention fake orphans? And of course, at the center of it, we have Logan Paul himself who has abandoned this thing, leaving thousands of fake orphans in his wake. Wait a second. Thousands of victims in his wake. <laughs> now, you'll be hearing from some of those people because their stories are heartbreaking. This is the first in a three-part series that's been a year in the making. And if you like high-effort investigations like this one, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. I don't take sponsors. We are viewer-supported. So if you want to and are able to, thank you. I you know what? I feel like it's kind of worth it with him because he does good work. Coffeezilla does really good work. Either way, enjoy the video. For the last six months, I've been working on my own NFT project. We have a massive team behind it and are probably out of pocket like a million just because we believe it's gonna work. September 1st, CryptoZoo.co. We okay. don't scam. That's I've fine. never scammed anyone before. Logan mm -hmm. cares extremely deeply about his audience, loves his audience, loves his brand, doesn't have to f scam to make money. Oh. Yeah, this is CoffeeZilla, you mean uh... Welcome to part one, the million dollar mystery that began this whole story. Like many people, I first heard about CryptoZoo from a podcast Logan runs called Impulsive, which was the experience of a lot of people that I spoke to. So I first heard about it on the Logan Paul podcast. Impulsive, I think. It was off the, one of the Impulsive episodes. The thing that I'm most excited for, and this is the first time I've ever said anything about this. For the last six months, I've been working on my- Uh, CV, I don't think Logan did. I think Mike did. I think Mike did. My own NFT project. I think there need. I think there needs to be a fresh take, and this project that I have uh, is that fresh take. Now look. At first, I was just as surprised at this pitch as anyone else because I just got finished roasting Logan for a different coin called Dink Doink, which his fans lost money on. I'm a Dink Doink fan. I've ever seen it. That's why I'm all in. It's comedic. It's fun. It's yeah. Okay, that's so. Th that song was so. Uh, oh my god. Oh my god. Now look, I know Logan and his friends tried to make it look like Dink Doink was all about the memes, but it turns out they secretly were tied to the project, and Logan created the Dink Doink character himself, and subsequently abandoned that project. So if you invested in it, you got blasted, and Logan rightfully took a lot of heat for Dink Doink, which is why I was surprised when he seemingly immediately jumped into another crypto project. But Logan insisted CryptoZoo, it was different. It wasn't his friend's project this time, it was his. And it wasn't even a project at all. It was a game that could earn you money. I'm, I'm excited to launch, uh, to launch... My game. You keep using a, and you just did it again. You keep using a word there. Game. You're not using like a project. It's a game. It's a game. It's a fun, it's a really fun game that makes you money. Now you might be wondering, how is it possible to earn money from a game? Well, let me try to break it down for you. This is how it was supposed to work. You started by buying this crypto token called Zoo, which is their in-game currency. And you use Zoo coins to then buy egg NFTs, which you can then hatch to become animals. You then can breed those two animals to become hybrid animals. For example, if you breed a gorilla and a kitten, you get a gore kitty. And the more rare the NFT, the higher the daily yield of zoo tokens that animal earns you every day. The uh, okay. I, I just want to say within the four, first four minutes, listening to what that game was. Um... Why did anybody believe that sh It's like Pokemon, but crossbreeding. I mean, what? What? Like, what? 
theoretically, it works like almost like passive income. You can then burn your animal NFTs to release the zoo they earned back to you. And from there, you can invest it into eggs or just cash out. Now, some of you of the Egyptian persuasion might notice some triangular qualities to this game description. But let's not be too quick to judge because remember, there are a lot of NFT games built on this model. It's called play to earn. Now, Logan admits that there are other games like his, but what's going to really make his stand out is that other games have randomly generated assets. His game has handmade art. It's quick to make a digital asset with, you know, unique randomly generated characteristics. We handmade art for the past six months, bro. Approval, very specific notes, 10 different artists making art for our project. Now, I'll admit, this all sounds very enticing. Handmade art. Oh. No, it doesn't. I don't know fun game that can earn you money and one of the biggest influencers in the world backing it. You might think, how can I lose? Which is why when people were told all you had to do to play was buy an egg, people spent millions. Just on the first launch between ETH and Zoo, people bought $2.5 million worth of eggs in the first day. And did I mention the game hadn't even been launched yet? All people were buying was the marketing and the promises. And it wasn't just the NFTs they bought either. The Zoo token also skyrocketed in value, reaching a $2 billion market cap pre-game launch, right? The trading volume was in the tens of millions of dollars per day. Oh. Which kind of is like Fortnite not coming out, but people trading tens of millions of dollars in V-Bucks every day. That's what this was like. And I know it sounds stupid to buy an influencer project, but you have to understand people saw Logan as different. It was Logan Paul at the end of the day, an internet personality that I- Yes, it was Logan Paul. That's all you have to say, Logan Paul. I mean, he's kind of, I mean, he cleaned up a little bit for a little while there, but like he's kind of known for being scummy. Am I wrong? I've always known like Logan Paul to be kind of scummy. I mean. I actually trust it, but I actually kind of believed it. Obviously, when Why? Because he's a big YouTuber? Because now he's in the WWE? Like, what What has he done to make you trust him? I do not understand. When someone so influential releases something, everyone wants to be a part of it. I used to believe in this false fantasy that everyone else thought even that Logan Paul's a changed man. I thought it was a safe place having a, a guy like that identified, like Logan Paul being the head of the project. They had seen this story he had been telling everyone that uh, he was this reformed influencer, right? That he was no longer a reckless clout goblin just in it for the money. They thought this time it's different. Logan Paul couldn't possibly scam us, right? But as the game got closer to release, the CryptoZoo team started releasing the first ever photos. Okay, that, that photo is cute though. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to say it. That photo's cute. That photo's real cute. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> of these animals. And come to find out this handmade art story wasn't really true. It was actually Adobe stock photos mashed together. This was the sort of first red flag of this project. And I made a video about it at the time, um, but it was kind of surface level and something didn't add up beneath the surface. Something where I just couldn't shut this case down. But you know what? Logan Paul did that. Remember, um, okay, so his Maverick merch, his Maverick merch, he, um, who was it? Who was it? Who was it? I think it was Nerd City that pretty much told everybody that his Maverick merch wasn't even art that he commissioned. It was just a regular picture that you could buy and then they just put colors on it. Like he didn't even have that commissioned. It was literally like a, um, um, not a PDF. Um, it was just literally a picture, a stock, a stock picture that you can get for free that he made into merch. You know what I'm saying? PNG. Thank you. It was just a regular PNG that you could get for free on the internet that he made into merch. Period. Clip art, PNG, whatever. It was free. That's what his Maverick was. He's been known for doing that. Down in my head. It was actually part of the announcement video that they, something they said. See if you can spot it. We have a massive team behind it and are probably out of pocket like a million just because we believe it's going to work. On development. Yeah. That's the line that started this whole mystery. We spent a million dollars on development. I couldn't get this out of my head. You know, is he lying? There's no way he expects people to believe he spent it on art. So wait, maybe he spent it on blockchain stuff, right? That's what I thought. But then I audited the smart contract and it's not handmade at all. It's not even original. It's what's called a fork, a copy of, you know, some other code that exists out there. One of them is called Floki Shiv X, which launched before it. So 
Where'd this million dollars go? I, I didn't understand. And Logan just kept repeating this claim. We put hundreds of thousands of dollars in it. Uh, personally, the whole team, a million plus. Now at the time I'm looking into this, there's a teaser going around for Hatch Day, which is the day you can hatch your egg NFTs. And it kind of symbolized the true launch of crypto. So I thought maybe this is it. Maybe this is where they spent all the money on their game. Even their community manager, Ben Roth, promised people after Hatch Day, things will take a turn for the 180. So I put Ben Roth on the board too. I needed to know all the characters in CryptoZoo. I can't imagine I mean, I don't, I, I don't like calling y'all fans, so I, I, I can't imagine trying to take advantage of my subs and viewers. I, I, I can't imagine doing that. That is so fucking scummy to me. It's like, what? And I waited. And finally, on November 3rd, 2021, Ben Roth turned out to be right. Things did take a turn on Hatch Day, only for the worse. Let's meet one of the victims, Helicopter Bob, to explain more. My name is Rob, Helicopter Bob, lost just under $7,000 with CryptoZoo. And the first thing I asked Bob was about his animals, if he was making money with CryptoZoo, how much he made, and if the passive yield worked. Oh, it never did from the beginning. There what? wasn't even written into the contract where it showed that you could, that you were actually yielding zoo, but there was nothing that was actually, you know, backing that up. There was no way to claim your yield. There never was. Wait, 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 play that again. Did you hear that? There was no way to claim your yield. There never was. Wait, but if it, I mean, what? Hold on, the core mechanic of CryptoZoo that you can make money with these stupid animals didn't even work on launch day. And still, to this day, a year later, still does not work, is what the investors are saying. Which this is just crazy. People spent millions of dollars on these eggs. But it even gets worse because I kept talking to people and I discovered something. Because remember I told you, you could buy eggs with those zoo coins? Right. Well, apparently they also made it so you could buy them with Ethereum. And on the day of selling, about half of these purchases took place with Ethereum. With Ethereum. Only it turns out for the people who spent ETH, not only did the yield part of it not work, did the NFTs not pay you, you also couldn't even hatch them. So I have... So what? Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. Brianna, Brianna, um, Brianna says either he did this with the intention to scam people or he's so incompetent at projects. Holy shit. Acquired a bunch of eggs and, and I actually want to play the game. I didn't acquire the eggs with the intent of keeping them. I actually wanted to hatch them and see what I got out of them and, and play in this ecosystem that's, that's been advertised or whatever, right? And then I can't do anything. It's not showing up on the website when I connect my wallet, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm a little baffled. I'm like, Is, I must be doing something wrong. So I open up, I open up a support ticket. I open up a support ticket. CryptoZoom Ben Roth is actually the person answering my support ticket. Oh yeah, no, no, it's, it's, it's down for the moment, but we're working on it. Let me tell you, it's 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 never been it's never been up. What? Wait, you can't even hatch? No. It's, I'm telling. Wait, this was put out eleven days ago. It launched in November, and they can't even hatch the eggs that they bought with crypto. Over a year later, the hell? Oh shit! It's just a picture. There's nothing I can do with it. You're kidding! You can't hatch? There's nothing I can do with it. Uh, you can ask. You can ask any of those community guys. Uh, it's basically worth nothing whatsoever. Wow. So on launch day, basically nothing worked, and a year later, that's still true. Now after this was discovered, the price of wait, what do you have written down there? Huh? Crypto zoo mods tell me cross chain hatching at one point worked, but it was so buggy it was shut down. Okay. Worked, and a year later, that's still true. Now, after this was discovered, the price of Zoo fell 63% in just 24 hours. And at this point, Logan Paul basically goes silent on CryptoZoo. No more podcast mentions, no more saying he handmade art. CryptoZoo already got millions in investments, but Logan only speaks in the Discord twice over the next year to say, quote, sober, currently shaking my head, and yo. That was his contribution to this project. Meanwhile, his community manager, Ben Roth, was actively claiming that Logan was going to be marketing CryptoZoo any day now. He told people things like, Logan is an uncontrollable marketing guru. It's over when we launch. And when we have a product to market, it'll get marketed. And marketing will crush, I promise you. 
And this disconnect between Logan abandoning the project and his team on CryptoZoo saying that he hadn't, saying that it was going to be any day now, left investors feeling like they were being led on. What do you have to do? Well, yeah. They were promised something and they're not getting it. And, and it's not like you put in five bucks, ten bucks. Okay, who gives a fuck, right? They put in thousands of dollars. Like what? Was go on and tell us, look, there's something going on with this project. I'm, I'm abandoning it or whatever before people got more and more track and promising and promising. Yeah, this is going to be great. But when it came to actually doing anything, he, he just hid away from it. Have some decency to come out, talk to the people that invested in it. Yes. That invested along the way on all of the fake and false promises and all of the false hype and be honest with people. But he's but it took Coffeezilla to make three videos on it for him to all of a sudden I'm gonna talk about it on impulsive. Dude, dude, you should have been said something. You should have said something a month in when it wasn't working. Weeks in of it not working. You literally have people giving thousands of fing dollars. One guy half a million. And after a year and three videos later, now you want to say something? Oh, hell no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Mm -mm. Surely, Logan Paul, who's got this billion dollar hydration company and, and WWE star, has got enough money. He doesn't need to, to rug this lot. And it's because of these false promises about marketing that these poor investors believed in CryptoZoo so long they sat and watched every Logan Paul episode trying to guess and decipher when this so-called marketing push would happen. And Logan and his team really fed into this with a lot of cryptic messages. Only a month after CryptoZoo's launch, uh, actually, the hatch day, they started teasing this. Not too much of this is out, but he, he's been working on a massive project. And the one, one of them will be the biggest thing I ever do. It'll be the, it's like my, my life and soul is wow. put into this project, is where, which is where most of my time these days goes. Next week, I dropped the trailer for a passion project I've been poured, I poured my life into. This will be the biggest thing I've ever done. Yet nothing. Wow, surely this secret project that Logan put his soul into is CryptoZoo, right? You know, the project he launched a month ago? Well, his fans certainly thought so. I'm like, holy cow, it makes so much sense. He's talking about CryptoZoo. Ben and the dudes are like, like putting smiley faces and, and egging the rest of the community. Like, this is it, guys. You know, this is what we're working towards. I mean, this is it. This, this is it. This, it's finally happening. Logan's going to market this the project. This is gross, CB. I agree that. with Logan's you. Logan's going to market the project and it's going to change everything. So now imagine their surprise when another clip surfaces of Logan finally admitting this secret project isn't CryptoZoo at all. It's something else entirely. I'll tell you about this project when uh, we get closer to launch. Yeah, this project's going to be- Is that the thing with the egg? The, like the zoo? No, 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 no. Okay, this one, this one's gonna be, yeah, yeah. This will be, this will be crazy if we're done. Oh. You notice how he just brushed that off when they asked him about that? He just brushed it off like, no, 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 no. Dude, oh my God. And can you imagine if you're one of these investors and Logan Paul's going pitching this new secret project and you're thinking it's CryptoZoo and someone's like, oh, is it that is it that thing with the eggs? And he's like, no, 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 definitely, definitely not. That was the last project. This is the real project that I'm working on. Thankfully, people didn't just let this slide because as he went around making the rounds on his new project called 99 Originals, people were like, hey, didn't you just abandon your last one? And unsurprisingly, it's not his fault. It's the bad actors who ruined the project. Oh. I see people giving multiple explanations for why these haven't worked, and you know there's accusations out there. How does it make you feel when people are doing these takedown videos about your NFT projects previously? Uh, it's it's sad because of what I just said. Mm. There's so much going on behind the scenes. Like, dog, I'm not the bad guy here. Yeah, yeah. There's some actual out there. Yeah. Then say something about it. Say something about it. Hell, go in that Discord and let them know. Be truthful to people. People literally gave you thousands of dollars hundreds of thousands of dollars all together and you can't say shit what no be truthful with them uh, and i'm it's not me like i'm here to build this is a space where a lot of people do see dollar signs like any burgeoning industry if there's money to be made there's gonna be both good and bad people um there's a lot of shade characters in the crypto space i'm learning all of it we had a issue with um crypto zoo where our, our, our lead developer uh, took the code that he made fled to switzerland actually fled to switzerland and like held it hostage for a million dollars like behind the scenes drama that like like took took uh took a stick and stuck it in the spokes of my wheels oh well that wasn't expected there's a shady developer who held up logan's code hostage in switzerland that's why this hasn't worked the whole time he held it hostage for a million dollars well let's add that to the board i mean isn't the mystery solved Okay, I just want to say one thing I love about CoffeeZilla's videos 
It's very, they're very interactive. You know what I'm saying? It's not just somebody just sitting here talking. It's like very interactive with like the graphics and like, let's put that on the board. I love his videos. Yeah, he's seen green and only green. Yeah, you're exactly right, Brienne. What's up, Zero? Now, obviously, the first thing I wanted to do was hunt down this developer, who we'll be calling Z here, and find out the <laughs> truth of what happened. Why did he steal Logan's code for a million dollars? However, I finally got a hold of him, and when I did, he admitted he took the code hostage, but he says the reason for it was nothing like what Logan had said. He never, he never gave me anything at all, ever. I never paid. And, uh, you know, we got to a point when I was working on it where I just realized they were just going to try to steal all of my work and not gain me. So I took all the source code private. Yeah. Wouldn't one of the first people you would pay now if this guy's telling the truth wouldn't one of the first people you would pay would be the fucking developer i'm just asking i mean i i would think that if you are developing a game one of the first people you would pay would be the developer because they are holding all your shit I mean, what? What? And I, I just kind of, like I said, like a month just trying to negotiate and um, get, get something figured out where I would finally pay. Because like, on my end, I've seen 30 engineers so I'm earning $50,000 a week on building this, building this thing. And um, the only thing they brought to the table were a bunch of Photoshop changes. So Z claims he wasn't... Oh! He's like, I'm burning 50000 a week, and all they're bringing to the table is some stolen JPEGs. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Blackmailing anyone, he had to hire a team to develop this whole thing, and he just wanted to be paid for the work they did. According to him, they negotiated a $1 million payday for this whole project. And from the second I heard that, I thought, oh, that's interesting, because Logan claims he spent a million dollars on this whole thing. And this developer saying he's owed a million dollars on this project. Now, I didn't want to just take one person's word for it, so I later confirmed with another developer oh. who worked for something called the Blockchain Center that he also hadn't been paid. Uh, we've been paid nothing. I would have loved to have Zoo, but I don't have any. So that's multiple... How are y'all... Wait, then what the f*** did y'all spend your million dollars on if you're not paying people? Wouldn't the developers be the first people to f***ing pay if they're the ones making it for you? What? Oh my god. Sources working on the CryptoZoo team project who were not paid. Now, obviously, these are big accusations, which is why I wanted to confront Logan Paul on them. But unfortunately, we're not exactly on speaking terms. So I wonder, <laughs> he blocked how them. How can I speak to Logan without speaking to Logan? <laughs> and that's when I found out there was someone who might know just as much about this whole story. And I will explain everything one day with my manager who's like, in charge now one day a year later on impulsive after a year and three videos later well you know what count Cav Ca count cavos's five videos so eight so a year and eight videos later he's gonna finally say something on impulsive like what bro the hell out of here oh. logan paul's manager a guy named jeff levin he might be just what we need to settle this whole thing so i gave him a call Hello? Hey, Jeff. Hey, uh, sorry to bother you. This is Steven with CoffeeZilla. I'm calling because I've heard reports that CryptoZoo hasn't paid their development team, and I'm just reaching out for comment before I do this story. Um, I got your number from one of the development team, and uh, they just wanted to... I just want to follow up on that. Um, I have no comment for it. Okay, you're... Are you guys denying it? Or are you saying it's not true? Just no comment. I don't think that the information is true. Okay, because they're saying a million dollars hasn't been paid in development for CryptoZoo. And Logan Paul said publicly that it has been paid. Um, so, I mean, it's pretty serious accusation. Yeah, it's very serious. Story, if you guys have a whole side to I know, your story here. Your, your job, your job as, a, as, a, um, as someone that is reporting news is to actually verify correct news. Yeah, that's why he's f***ing calling you. To verify. Duh. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? Go to the damn source. Verify. Right, that's why I'm calling you. Duh. I know, and that's legal grounds for that stuff. So I'm just telling you. 
legally, you have to report correct news with verifiable information. But, right, that's why I'm calling you. They've yeah. given me a yeah, lot of things. A lot of evidence. Okay, well, okay. You can, you can have the evidence you want, but I'm just letting you know, if you report anything on us, I, I appreciate your business. I appreciate you as a person. And I'm just telling you, you know, from a legal standpoint, as we've been advised always, is if anybody reports fake news, that's where we won't, you know. Yeah, this call was a... Okay, that made no sense to me. He literally went to go verify and dude isn't answering, but telling him basically don't put fake news out there. Yeah, it sounds sus as hell. It sounds sus as hell. I mean, wouldn't Logan Paul's manager know if the people got paid? He could have answered a very easy yes or no. And CoffeeZilla getting hold of the manager is exactly what he's supposed to do. Oh my god. Oh my, mm-mm. Mm-mm. A mess. Jeff, Logan's manager, seems to be implying that I'm not allowed to repeat allegations his own development team made, even though Logan can go on podcasts and publicly accuse those developers of stealing his code. Not only that, he's the one who refuses to provide any rules for thee and not for me. That's what that's called. Evidence, but seems to sort of be implying that maybe we'll sue you if you tell this to anyone, which he then denies doing when I ask him if that's what he's doing. Told you I have no comment to it. I'm telling you once again, from a legal standpoint, you have to report truth. If you do not verify truths, then you're just allegations, and those then will be handled the way that we want to handle. Wait, so you're it's saying you're saying that. you refuse to no give comment. me proof that the no allegations comment. aren't true, but if I report on the I allegations, no you guys might sue. No. No, I did not say that. I That's what it sounds like you're saying. I did not say that. Oh, I, 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 again, I'm just I'm trying to read between no the comments. lines. Don't read between the lines. Okay. Listen okay. to the exact words that I'm saying. Okay. Listen to the exact words I'm saying. I'm listening. I have no comment on the situation. Okay. Your job legally is to report facts. That is a veiled threat. That is a veiled threat, especially when he says your job legally is to report facts. That is a veiled threat. Oh my God. If you don't report facts on the information you're given, it is illegal. Yes, that was a real conversation with a real person. Now, I'm no lawyer, but I don't think it's a crime to say that multiple developers say they haven't been paid and Logan's team refuses to provide any evidence or- Honestly, I don't see where it is a problem because they literally told you that. Like, as in, you have it on record and you played them saying that they weren't being paid. I mean, and then you go so far to go, you know what? Let me call Logan Paul's manager because Logan Paul has me blocked on Twitter. Let me call Logan Paul's manager and see if I can get that verified. And then the manager basically speaks word salad. That was word salad. Word salad with a little bit of a veil threat in there. That's all that was. Yeah, they voluntarily said it. It's not like, you know, they were made to say that. They, they What? Or like statements or wire transfers that they have. Which, by the way, seems incredibly ironic, given just how much Logan whines about not being paid by Floyd Mayweather. True. Where's my money, bitch? Floyd never paid me for our fight. Who am I, the IRS? Nope, but you might be the crypto zoo debt. Now, in all seriousness, I do want to... <laughs> I love it when CoffeeZilla just throws in a little bit of shade. I love it. Knowledge something which actually kind of looks bad a bit on the developers because it turns out very few written contracts were actually done. So much of this were verbal deals like, oh, we'll take care of you. We'll give you 350K. We'll give you a million. We'll give you whatever. But then when it was time to actually sign the deals, there's just always delays. What kind of promises were made to you? Uh, verbal promises, basically. So uh, verbal promises. And then we follow up with like a physical paper agreement. But that's when communication broke down this is where i think the dev guys screwed up and led to this whole situation of like okay we're just gonna oh yeah they shouldn't have done anything until they got it on paper they shouldn't have touched it at all until they got everything on paper and they got their money to take the code private until you pay us for our work and to be clear i'm not justifying not paying someone right. for what they did i'm right. just playing devil's advocate and saying this could have all been avoided by just getting every detail in writing and i think it's absolutely just a good general lesson but if you're thinking that that's the million dollar mystery solved well no, because this still doesn't make sense. Why not just pay the dev team 
what you publicly said, you kind of already paid them. Why not pay for a game that now isn't launched and now investors are so angry about? Why not pay when you already made millions from minting the eggs on this game? Well, this is where things get even stranger because right when I was ready to pin everything on Logan, and believe me, he is at fault, I was speaking to the Z developer and I heard a name that I hadn't heard before. I basically uh, came in with Eddie and Eddie, Eddie promised me, you know, 5% of the tokens and a million dollars. He never, oh. he never, really never gave me. Wait a second, who's Eddie? I thought that all of this was Logan Paul. I only put it together when the blockchain center guys also said a similar thing about their deal. They said they were promised 350K and it was Ibanez. They say they had no communications with Logan, but we know they weren't talking about different people. They both dealt with the same guy. So the guy's name, I put it together, it must be Eddie, Eddie Ibanez. Ibanez. Turns out he was managing the developers. What's this random guy doing in Logan Paul's project? And who is he? Who is Eddie Ibanez? Wait a minute. So... Oh, is he going to be the fall guy for this? Yes, hi, my name is Eddie Ibanez, the lead developer here at CryptoZoo. This reporter says Eddie's entire story is fake. Wait, what? To continuously lie, lead people on, hype people up, to put more money in, all the, all the while in the background. Things are going down, things are hitting the fan, and you left us holding the bag. Oh, okay. you stole 40 million in tokens from me. You are a scam artist. You are a liar and you betrayed your own community. You aren't that guy. Logan replies, oh, trust me, bro. I am that guy. For the last. Oh, wait. Shit. Um, OK. So. Okay, the next video should be really good because that enticed me, not gonna lie. Last six months, I've been working on my own NFT project. CryptoZoo.co. It's a really fun game that makes you money. I lost around $50,000 in CryptoZoo. I lost $40,000. $500,000. Good God. See, I'm telling you, it's just a picture. There's nothing I can do with it. Wait, you can't even hatch? No. We had a f***ing issue with um, CryptoZoo where our, our, our lead developer, uh, took the code that he made, fled to Switzerland, actually fled to Switzerland, and like held it hostage for a million dollars. He never, literally never gave me anything at all, ever. And he promised me, you know, five percent tokens and a million dollars. He never, he never, literally never gave me. Wait a second, who's Eddie? I uh, Zero says, rip the so-called redemption arc Logan apparently had. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know how he's going to get out of this. I really don't. I really don't know how he's going to get out of this. It's still possible, though, because he always seems to uh, squirm his way out of things. So, hmm. I thought that all this was Logan Paul. What's this random guy doing in Logan Paul's project? And who is, who is Eddie Ivins? To begin answering the question of who Eddie is, I decided to take a deep dive. I started by looking through all the news articles I could on Eddie, where I found out he graduated from MIT and from there became a data scientist and cybersecurity expert and used that technical background. To okay, not gonna lie, I want this computer set up. Just saying. I would love this. To win a Super Bowl for the Eagles. And there were videos on him too, which all painted him as brilliant and extremely accomplished. Yes, hi, my name's Eddie Ibanez. I'm the father of three, um, lead developer here at CryptoZoo. As a teenager, he successfully hacked AOL from his bedroom. He continued to pursue computer science until attending MIT. He was then recruited out to work for a government agency in cybersecurity, developing software that reverse engineers the location of known government and terrorist threats. You started oh. with the federal government and you started off really tracking criminals with, with burner phones and all. <sighs> Honestly, after this whole search, I felt more confused than ever. If Eddie's such an amazing guy, why didn't he pay developers? And is he really the puppet master behind CryptoZoo? Or is it someone else? Honest. Yo, who is this guy? Oh my God. Fleet, I felt like at this point I needed a drink and I needed to ask for help. I need a drink. Hey, how's it going? <sighs> Not good. Oh, what happened? Well, I'm confused about this Eddie Ibanez guy. He comes out of nowhere with this CryptoZoo story and Everything about him I find seems great. So, what's the problem? Well, everything's not great. Everything about this guy just seems too perfect. He's an MIT grad, he worked for the military. He even claims he won a Super Bowl. Why would that guy work for Logan Paul? I don't know, but I can find out. He said his name is Eddie Ibanez. I think he goes by Eduardo technically, but- To be clear, I don't think that sounds like technicals to me. I really don't. I think Matt has lost his mind. I, that does not sound like technicals to me. 
<laughs> Victor, technicals bot, lol. I don't think it sounds like technicals to me. Wait, what are you doing? I'm just looking around. And done. Well, what'd you find? A few red flags, a couple of misdemeanors. Ooh, a few court cases. I'll send them over. He got sued by his landlord for not paying rent, sued by his credit card company for not paying his bill. You can skip that stuff. I just need whatever's relevant to CryptoZoo. Well, that's basically it. See? I love a man with ethics. You see that? Coffeecilla said, skip all that. I just need CryptoZoo stuff. Although, he kind of put it in his video. <laughs> Other than... Hold on. No, wait. I did find something. Look. Look at this. What's this? It's from a paper in Philly. I barely picked it up. This reporter says Eddie's entire story is fake. Wait, what? Yeah, the whole Eddie Ivanez character. This guy Adam Robb investigated it. He says it's a lie. Oh! I gotta find this guy. He, send me his info. I, I got some calls to me. Oh! No! Oh my god. Okay, come on, let's go. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we met up with Adam Robb, the reporter who's been investigating Eddie Ibanez for a while now, and I wanted to know, what did Adam think of him when they first met? I wasn't quite sure what to make of him. Based on what I knew about him, he was a MIT grad who went on to work for the CIA and the Defense Department, and I didn't want to waste his time. And it wasn't long after I sat down that I realized he was wasting my time. Wait a minute, so you mean to tell me he's a random internet person that lies about their background to seem cool? Oh my god, like that's never happened before. Just saying. Tell me about some of the lies Eddie told you. Eddie has told me so many lies over the course of my two interviews with him. And the first lie he told me is probably the oldest lie that he's told so many people, which is that he's an orphan. No, bro. No. He starts off with the feel sorry for me, I was an orphan. Oh my God, bruh. <laughs> Bruh! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> mm, Bruce Allen's like Logan scamming fans while getting scammed by Eddie. Dude! Oh my god! Oh, bro! <laughs> I first realized Eddie might be lying to me when I went home the next day and Googled Eddie Ivan's family. I found a video of Eddie and his wife uh, making rice pudding on a Fox & Friends segment on Fox News. Wait, what? Oh, so he's like, wait a minute. So this, okay. And I'm just, I, again, I have not watched this video, so I don't know what it said after this point at all. Okay, I haven't, this is my first time watching the video. But you mean to tell me he has lied his way up the ranks? Are you kidding me? This dude has lied so well up the ranks? Mm. And Eddie's wife, Jackie, explained that she learned the recipe from Eddie's mother. So in that picture, you've got uh, Jackie Ibanez. You know her along with her husband, Eddie, and her two little girls. Hi. You love rice pudding. Why is this yes. a family recipe? Okay, so Eddie's mom made this rice pudding once. But he was an orphan. Oh my God. Oh my God. Wait, Eddie's mom? I thought Eddie was an orphan. Well, it turns out the only problem with that is that not only does his mom exist, she's alive and in his life. And it turns out it wasn't just Adam that heard this story either. He told it a lot. Did, did you ever meet his mother or his parents? I did meet his mother. Did he ever tell you he was an orphan? Yes. How did he square that with you? So that's why I was so confused. He told me he was an orphan and all this stuff, but then I, I meet his mom. He told me he was an orphan and then I met his mother. So he's not a good liar. He can't remember who he tells lies to. What is wrong with the, I'm an orphan. Weeks later, oh, hey, here's my mom. After I told you I was an orphan, he's not even smart about it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, this is, oh, this is great. This is, this is fantastic. I am loving this. Is quite the string of words. But as insane as these lies are, let's be real. It doesn't explain why CryptoZoo failed. But the next lies kind of do. Because oh. part of Eddie's story is also that he went to MIT where he was recruited to the CIA. And it's part of why he was so attractive as a lead developer, all the wild experiences that he had had. But it's just not true. 
I emailed the MIT Red Stars office and I asked if Eddie Ibanez attended the school and they confirmed in absolute terms that he never attended MIT. That's right. Okay. Dear people who like to lie on the internet, real life, or whatever. If you're going to work on a big project with millions of dollars, if you don't think they aren't going to check every social media and everything you've ever said that you're going to do, you're dumb. In this day and age, they check everything, especially with like a big like job like that. They check everything. Oh my God. Yes, apparently uh, his mother is the new Jesus because she rose again. Apparently. Woo. The whole orphan to MIT origin story, it wasn't true. And Eddie's whole backstory from here kind of falls apart as well. How could he have been recruited to a government agency out of MIT if he never went to MIT? MIT. If this is all seeming crazy to you, you might ask yourself, who would believe all this? And this is where Eddie shines. He kind of had a gift for getting people to believe in the lies he told especially super rich and powerful people for some reason. Like take for instance, this story, him winning the Super Bowl for the Philadelphia Eagles. He managed to convince the owner of the New York Yankees that it was true, Barry Clarver, who completely bought into it without question and told the same story later in a college seminar. Listen, this is a good example of just because people have money, it doesn't mean they're smart, okay? quite a bit of people with money have no street sense whatsoever. It's called street smarts. Most of them don't have it. So little assholes like that can go and lie to them because they don't have the instinct of people lying to them. I'm just saying. You know? right into the work that you did for the Philadelphia Eagles, which led to a led to a Super Bowl championship, led to you getting a Super Bowl ring. Yep. Tell us exactly what your job was to do for them and how it worked out. No, sure thing. So first off, they they said, like, uh, we don't know where to put you. But uh, and then the sports science guy was that one guy. He's like, hey, I got some data. I'm, I'm interested. So uh, so we took in his data and we found out that these players, uh, what happens is it's like a player as they run around, uh, they get a certain fatigue level. So if you think if you ever played Street Fighter, the video game, there's like a red bar at the top. And every time you get hit, that red bar goes down. So you die. Okay, right. So then we're trying to figure out kind of what that is for a player and on an injury level, right? There's injury bar that gets uh, that gets knocked down and that gets KO'd. This is insane. How did y'all fall for that shit right there? How? 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 How did y'all fall for that shit right there? Oh my God. Yeah, you can look at him and tell he's lying. He told a baseball coach that won a foot that he won a football chip. Yes. Yeah, exactly, Bruce. I love that he's doing the interview on a boat to be like, yeah, I'm the real deal, bitch. <laughs> oh my god. He convinced an owner of the Yankees that he won a Super Bowl by turning sports athletes into Street Fighter characters. And of course, none of it's true. The Philadelphia Eagles responded to a fact check saying he never worked for their player analysis team. Not only that, the Eagles also said that Eddie did try to do an in-person presentation in March of 2018, but that was already a month after the Eagles had already won the Super Bowl. And also they didn't hire him because of course not. Meaning there's no way this story is true. He's and yet, a scammer. He's convinced people at the highest levels of sports that it is. And this is where we get back to CryptoZoo, of course, because he's a scammer. He's a, this dude's a scammer. Oh my it's God. how he got involved with that project. Remember Jeff Levin, Logan's manager, who we spoke to last time? Well, he also spoke to Adam Robb. And when he told him the reasons he liked Eddie, they sounded very familiar. And did, did he tell you, I guess, kind of like about like working with the NFL and that kind of stuff and the whole, yeah. like his yeah. time in the CIA and all that? He did. And it was interesting. It was like, this is wild. You know, like, that's pretty cool. But he's, once again, he's humble. He's, he's not like never bragging or anything like that. Wait, wait, but he, but he is bragging. He literally made it all. He's bragging about shit that didn't happen. Oh my God. Wouldn't it be the, okay, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I gotta ask this. All right, I can understand Logan Paul falling for some shit, right? But it, wouldn't it be Logan Paul's manager's job to look into everybody approaching Logan Paul? 
You know what I'm saying? Like, wouldn't it be his job to fact check that shit? Being Logan Paul's manager? I mean, wouldn't it be? I think it would be. The hell? All up, the CIA NFL stories aren't true. How could that not be bragging? But that's the impression Eddie gave off. But that's not all. Because Eddie didn't just use made up stories to get in with the CryptoZoo team. He also used his other connections, his real millionaire and billionaire friends that he's managed to gain with all these fake stories. And some of them vouched for him. People like Chris Birch and Todd Morley. And what was the thing that kind of like sold you on Eddie? Was it the fact that like Chris and Todd and people like that kind of like have backed him in the past? And like, I just think he's a down to earth, cool, humble guy. Okay. Who's been, who's been super successful. They're trying to do with an agenda. And he's just kind of like, hey, look, I'm super smart in what I know. And I have amazing relationships through the business that I've done. It's incredible. I mean, how does this guy keep getting away with it? Honestly, it's baffling. But I've got to say, up till now, everyone's been fooled sort of fair and square on the same grounds. But okay, listen, this this goes to show don't trust nobody. You can't trust nobody in these streets. What is wrong with y'all? When you've got, especially when you got money involved, don't trust nobody. The hell is wrong with these people? trust these what oh my god oh my god mm -mm. i found out cryptozoo did have an advantage that could have saved them all this trouble the whole time so a month before the launch of cryptozoo i got on the phone with jeff levin logan paul's manager and after he spoke fondly of eddie and his work i confronted him about some of eddie's lies including how he didn't work for the nfl jeff told me he doesn't know much about the nfl but he knows about the business world and chris birch and todd morley vouched for eddie and so jeff and logan were going to continue working with him have have so you were So you were told, Jeff, you were told about this motherfucker lying and you still went with him. You still backed him up. What? Uh, Have you ever verified that anything Eddie said about himself is true? We verified that it's true? Yeah. yeah. We, talk, we definitely talk to people. Okay. You didn't verify shit! You didn't verify shit. You were told he was lying, but you're telling people you verified. You are dumb. You should not be a manager. Oh my God. And his friends and, you know, people that he said he has relationships with, which we've confirmed that for sure. Okay. Because I had trouble with some of that, like, with the NFL, like, saying that, like, no, we've never worked with him and that kind of thing. But, but you've had... The NFL, the NFL saying that? Yeah. Like who at the NFL? The, the comms teams for the Eagles and the uh, Dolphins. And then the um, people specifically that he named that he said you worked with. Got it. Um, I don't know necessarily the football stuff. Okay. You know, I don't have relationships with the football world. Sure. But, but the business world, you know, we've definitely, you know, talked to multiple people. Like Tom and Chris and they backed him. Correct. Wait a second. This means at minimum, Jeff knew about Eddie's background beforehand, or part of it, and still decided to go with it. This is just unbelievable, willful stupidity. Yes! And Jeff is Logan's manager. I assume him and the team should have known about this as well. But still, they went forward with it, even though they knew this stuff before launch. Now, I started to reach out for comments about this because obviously this is a huge deal. But when I did, I got a call from somebody new, someone with a different perspective they hadn't heard from before. Jake, the Crypto King. He's been involved with some of Logan's projects in the past, like Pokemon, for example. He was called the Collectibles Guru a few years ago. Nowadays, he goes by Crypto King and he's an advisor for the CryptoZoo project. So let's add him to the conspiracy board. But the question is, what did he have to say? I took a call with him and he mostly wanted to talk off the record. But when I pressed him, he was willing to at least put one thing on the record for me. Right, one more thing about Eddie before we get off of him. We actually- have got The biggest reason it failed, in my opinion. Okay. Because I don't want it to ever be thought that Logan's the reason it failed. He's not. Logan wasn't smart enough for what he tried to build. And then when it was built and was failing, didn't have the ability to correct it and to save face and reputation. It was more convenient to pull out than to be associated with a failing project that the dev rocked. So um, I could put the, that one sentence on the record. Well. Oh. Well, we already knew Logan wasn't smart enough. Just saying. Yeah, that's him, Zero. Good old Crypto King. Wow. So instead of trying to get people to correct it, 
Logan Paul, according to him, instead of trying to get people to correct it, Logan Paul just pulled out. Oh my god. That is certainly emphatic. Crypto King says it's all Eddie's fault. And this is a nice, neat theory for us. You know, Eddie ruined everything because, yeah, Eddie is a liar. Right. So it does seem to explain how these developers got screwed. But this theory doesn't fit all the facts because Eddie was kicked off the team months ago. And still, the game is not working, despite Logan claiming they were going to go back and fix all the problems. Again, retroactively working to make the, make these projects right. And it just takes time, bro. It just takes time. Development takes time. Working backwards to fix things, which isn't ideal, but also this project will speak for itself. And now, you know, we're working backwards to try to, to, try to fix it. This oh, so they had already gotten... Oh, hell no. Just hasn't happened. Even a year from launch, the game just doesn't exist. What's worse is the newest dev team who came on after Eddie just quit. And one of the reasons was they hadn't been paid for over a month. I know this because Logan's team is leakier than the Titanic and someone told me that. Uh but we also have blockchain evidence. This is Jeff paying Block Ops, the company they hired out on July 19th. They were supposed to redo all this work. It's confirmed by their leader, Skip, talking about a first monthly payment on that day. But after that, there's nothing until they quit on September 26th in a post called Our Departure from CryptoZoo. We, Block Ops, were, were brought on as the new development team for CryptoZoo with the objective of rebuilding the ecosystem, including maintainable smart contract infrastructure, revamp, dApp, and sustainable tokenomics. Now, I do have to say, it does look like they were eventually paid, but only a day after they quit. And this is just the same problem as before, slightly different. Nobody can pay these devs on time, and investors end up getting nothing. And so I can't buy into the idea that Eddie's at fault for everything because when Eddie was gone, they, they had a lot of the same pay. problems. Now, it was only at the point that this dev team quit, Block Ops, that things really took a turn. Because if the Titanic was leaking before, now it was sinking and everyone basically gave up hope. You know, from every direction, I started getting messages from all the investors who felt betrayed, who up to this point were holding on to hope. Now they felt defeated. They felt tricked by the crypto zoo team who had fed them promise after promise. And they were sick of it. He was never in a chat or anything, never apologized or told us anything. Things didn't work out. Things didn't work out. We all get that. But to continuously lie, lead people on, hype people up, yeah. put more money in, all, all the while in the background, things are going down, things are hitting the fan, and you left us holding the bag. I Literally, for thousands of dollars! I don't... I, I, oh my god! No, it was my decision, uh, and I did my research, uh, but I, I believe nobody has to lose money uh, in this way. And that's when a whistleblower stepped forward and decided enough Ooh. was enough. They decided to leak me messages, team messages, from the CryptoZoo team from all the way back in the beginning when they thought of this idea, all the way up to launch. And seeing that, it changed everything. Because all of a sudden, I got a lot of new information. Oh, Remember how snap. Jake, the Crypto King, said Eddie was the only problem? Well, a year ago, he was saying something very different. On the day of launch, he said this to the group. Logan, you stole 40 million in tokens from me. You are a scam artist. You are a liar. And you betrayed your own community. Wait, Crypto King sent that? What? What the hell? Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, hell. Keep going. You aren't that guy. Logan replies, oh, Jake, trust me, bro. I am that guy. You're going to change the whole story. Yeah, I'll go on the record for you. And yes, I'm going to show you the text message that said we can sell at, at these ascending market caps. And that it's not like I was trying to run a project. It's like I booked $250,000 into a project plus six months of time. And the founder never did anything he said he was going to do. And then hired a bunch of devs that didn't do what they were going to do. And every time I gave advice, the advice was I was like, so there was nothing illegal about that. Ethically, arguable. The rest? That Logan did to me was ethically wrong and illegal. Oh! 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 Oh my god, no wonder people are going crazy over these videos! Holy shit!